Good morning, everyone, and I'll kick off to more people coming in. Well, welcome to the ID Tech X show here in Santa Clara. We've got a truly great show for you over the next few days. We have over 3,200 people pre registered, and we normally have three or 400 more walk in during the day. We have over 220 speakers and also over 200 exhibitors. So there's going to be lots of new announcements and lots of exciting things to see. So what I want to do in my presentation, just over the next 15 minutes or so, is really, firstly, before I tell you about the event, tell you a bit about some of the big themes of technologies that we're we'll covering at this event. As I'm sure you're aware, we look at a whole range of different technologies, and I really want to highlight to you how all of these are very much interrelated. So starting off with one of the big themes first, it's um, really about new form factors of electronics coming through, which are enabling new design freedoms, and therefore new market opportunities. And one of those new form factors is stretchable electronics. Here we've seen a lot of new innovation to enable stretchable electronics from things such as stretchable links to those working in ways we can connect stretchable to uh, rigid devices and also complete center structures. Quite a bit of this is already commercial. We have a market in the e-textile space, which is all around stretchables usually, uh, worth $150 million this year, growing to $3 billion 10 years from now. And today, the commercial applications and wearables include things like ink and vest, and also a lot of sportswear from the different brands. But to highlight the greater interest in structural electronics, when we've looked at the amount of money being invested in this area, we see that in 2015, 30 times the amount of money was invested in companies focusing on structural electronics, versus those in 2012. So it really is one um, key area which is enabling new form factors and therefore new opportunities. Also related to new form factor electronics is this concept of structural electronics. I did, we, um, we really introduced this event about a year ago. And for those of you who are new to it, it's really taking the old approach of components being in a box the last 100 years or so, and changing that into structures becoming functional components. So this can include structures being coated, for example, with smart skins, or ultimately load-bearing components. And as of last year, it's now already been commercialized in many different ways. One is that we have millions of smartphones out there on the market which have a 3D printed antenna printed onto the 3D structure of parts of the phone. The benefit of this is that it can enable light weighting and saving space, but also rapid customization. And then we have others, things like in-model electronics, thanks to stretchable links. These are printed flats, they can be thermoformed to form a 3D shape with capacitor switches and mounted LEDs and so on. And coming soon, and which has been shown in research labs, is things like tires, which have embedded energy harvesting skins in them, based on tribal benefits. <coughs> as the vehicle moves along, it's not only part of the structure of the tire, but it's also generating energy from that motion, putting it back into the electric supply of the vehicle. So a lot of new design freedoms are going to be afforded thanks to the structural electronics. The third aspect of form factor um, innovation is that more and more key components are becoming flexible. At this event, we're hearing about many um, of these different trends and this progress. And two things shown here include uh, displays and also sensors. This is now allowing companies to really differentiate and also create new markets. Um, we believe that the flexible display market will be $30 billion 10 years from now. And that truly is being backed up with significant investment from companies. This year alone, LG and Samsung combined invested $10 billion in developing flexible displays. Um, and that's all the equipment and manufacturing going into it. So you can see this is really going to happen. And that's mainly because there's big pressure on companies to differentiate versus the old glass-based displays. Similarly, on the sensor side, we're seeing new form factors and capabilities. Many of the companies targeting new types of sensors are not trying to replace existing incumbent sensors, but they're leveraging a new form factor and a new capability to really go into new markets. You can see a few images there from flexible arrays of organic photo detectors through to uh, strain sensors, which can strain up to 100% and do this millions of cycles. Then we have the overarching theme of the increase in distributed electronics, or if you like, um, ubiquitous electronics. And this is manifesting itself in many different ways. IoT is one of the things that we'll be looking at at this event, which includes things like IP-based sensor nodes, 
of which we think about 1.2 billion will be sold in 2020, going into things like smart meters, uh, home thermostats, and sensing nodes, and so on. But the real highlight in terms of volume growth and log growth has been around the humble passive RFID tag. With this year, between UHF and HF RFID, over 12 billion will be sold, and that is 7 billion higher than previous years. So this is really beginning to take off in a wide variety of applications, one of the highlights being retail apparel. And you'll be hearing more about these different applications. With some of the newer aspects of IoT, such as IP based on some nodes, of course there's always an element of hype. Um, and so what we try and do this event is focus on providing case studies um, to really help you identify what are the short and medium term opportunities and who really is making money in this industry. So a lot of what I've spoken about so far is mainly to do with uh, low power, you know, widely dispersed electronics with new form factors. But that's only half the story. There's another huge trend which we're covering this event, which is much more about high power electricals. And that's based on this trend that more and more things are becoming electrified. And nowhere more so is that prevalent than in the automotive industry, where there's huge amounts of disruption going forward at the moment. For example, uh, we have um, a potential peak car scenario from 2030, thanks to autonomous vehicles, uh, meaning that cars don't have to do a drive away from 95% of the time, they can be used much more efficiently in that autonomous um, vehicle world. But there are plenty more surprises to come. If we look at the electric vehicle market value 10 years out from now, um, we have found that despite popular thinking that most of the money will be in electric cars, it will actually be in electrical, industrial and commercial vehicles, with e-buses being the biggest sector, taking 34% of the total EV market for land-based vehicles in 2027. Then there's other new trends that we look uh, into the future with things like electric vehicles and energy harvesting. I um, think the popular point of view is that the electric car is the end game which you plug in. And there the winds will be charging stations, utility companies and battery makers. Um, we see something beyond that. We see the end game being completely energy independent vehicles. So this is where the vehicle harvests enough energy from energy harvesting technologies on it um, to completely power itself. Is that a dream? Well, it's here today. And you may have seen this vehicle as you walked in. It's just by the registration desk. Um, and this is such an energy independent vehicle. It's a combination of structural electronics, um, energy harvesting with conformal PV over it, parts of the 3D printing, and it ends up being uh, what's claimed to be the world's most efficient electric vehicle. And you'll be hearing more about this great story uh, later on this morning. But it's here for the first time in North America at this show, and the whole team on hand so to ask some questions and learn much more about it. But energy independent vehicles is not just about prestige races such as this, it's becoming a commercial reality as well. Earlier this year, Hanji in China announced an energy independent car, and a range of cars in fact, um, and they hope to bring this into production from around 2020 onwards. This is based on solar technology from one of their subsidiaries, Alter Devices, who are here exhibiting this event, who developed a very lightweight, Ganymar side solar technology, so it's lightweight and very high efficiency to enable it to do that. PV is just one of the many different types of energy harvesting technologies that we'll also be looking at within this event. Um, and we look at the full spectrum from high power electrical engineering, which we think ultimately will have the highest market value for those energy harvesting, through to those making many different types of energy harvesting, including thermoelectrics, piezoelectrics, um, and electrodynamics, and many of those also being used for lower power devices, such as powering sensors. An example of that is the clean space tag shown on the right here. Um, and this is powered by ambient RF from your Wi-Fi signals from the 3G or 4G networks around you. And that triple charges the battery, um, which powers the gas sensor. And just a few years ago, people said this wasn't quite possible. But here we have a product based on um, ambient RF charging. This is currently being used in London and other cities. You can go by an Amazon, um, and it's, um, it's monitoring pollution. We've also seen a lot of new innovation in energy harvesting this year, all of which we've covered today. But one thing I'd like to point out is the work of Trio Electric Energy Harvesting. It's already been demonstrated that just from the motion of a heart beating from an animal, that generates enough energy to power a wireless sensor. But another trend that we'll be covering is this convergence to multimodal energy harvesting, 
And in the image at the top centre here, you see the fabric, which combines both PV with triboelectric, so it's passing energy from both sunlight as well as motion, all in an e-textile format, combining many of the things we've been talking about. So energy generation is one aspect, but we'll also be looking at energy storage, of course. Lithium ion battery technologies have been a fantastic technology, but really over the last 10 years we've maybe seen incremental improvements, and of course there have been big safety concerns going with a lot of that as well. So the gold rush is on. People are looking for something that offers a magnitude or more improvement in terms of performance and cost, looking at post lithium ion technologies. And this event will be covering this whole spectrum with the latest projects and um, also taking into account everything from safety to timelines and roadmaps that these things are going through. It's not just about performance and cost, we're also looking at new form factors coming through thanks to thin, flexible batteries. And a lot of that is being driven by the wearables community with large consumer electronic companies um, buying IP or buying companies or even developing their own flexible batteries because they're looking to embed these into wearable devices so the battery becomes less of a, a brick um, and more invisible to the wearer. Overarching all of these key topics that we're talking about is of course the huge new materials innovation that's going on. And we'll be looking at all the main different types of um, progress and the commercial outlook for that. From inductive inks, which are now stretchable and they're appearing in email devices in a washing machine currently being sold in the US, through to the commercialization finally of things like carbon nanotubes, um, the highlight being their use in batteries to improve the uh, recharging the speed. Um, the highlight there being the, the huge amount of carbon tubes, kilos being used on each electric bus, given the size of the batteries there, through to um, new types of materials which can be printed with 3D printing. We'll also be covering the wide range of manufacturing innovations to allow us to create all these exciting things and these factors from 3D printing. And now the hype has died down around the hobbyist market, um, we're focusing on the strong growth areas, including 3D metal printing, and also the coverage of uh, the bold acquisitions that are being made. 3D printed electronics is also combining 3D printing with printed electronics, and we have a range of companies now offering machinery, and you see that in the exhibition floor, such as the one shown here for Box of Eight. And another trend coming through manufacturing is desktop sized PCB manufacturer or prototyping shown here from that dimension, which can do this on flexible substrates up to three or four layers and also mounted components for you. So you can rapidly customize and turn around circuits. There's also a tremendous opportunity going forward for uh, manufacturing these things. For example, if you have thin ICs, which are flexible, you're know, trying to mount that onto a flexible substrate um, as well as different components and doing that all at high speed, it's very, very challenging. And so there's a lot of work going on around these hybrid, simple hybrid devices um, and how to mount these at high speed with accuracy and get good performance and robustness in use as well. And we'll be covering those trends. So in 10 minutes or so, I really hope I've shown you that all these things are very much interrelated from e-textiles, which are applicable to cars because they're looking to be used in things like heated seats and seat occupancy sensors to wearable technology, um, as well as um, the R3 tag going into many different applications. And what we've done at this event is really combine all of these different technologies because there is so much overlap with them. We've done <coughs> on the trade show um, and these different conference sessions covering it all. So if you're a materials company and you're looking to understand what car companies or, or wearable companies see and what their problems are, um, you can meet those from the supply chain. And similarly, if you're a brand or, or a VM, you can see what are the new components and materials coming through that you can build into your product roadmap going forward. And above all, the main focus that we try to achieve at this uh, show is really focused on the commercialization of technologies. There's always huge amounts of hype with emerging technologies. Biotech has been involved in this for 17 years, tracking these different things. And so we think what adds most value is to have big brands talking and attending and saying what are their problems and challenges and really provide that reality check to the industry. So let me just finish off by telling you a little bit about the show and who's here. Um, if you look at who's here by uh, job function and value chain positioning, it's really nice and spread, I guess, I think, across the whole value chain. About 21% are materials companies, 23% component companies, and 21% are end users and integrators. 
do attendings from 45 countries, so it truly is a, a very international show. And at this point, um, compared to last year, attendees are 23 percent up. So there's a much larger crowd. In addition to that, there's also a larger exhibition. We have 209 exhibitors coming from 23 countries, um, really across the whole supply chain, from those providing services, integrators, uh, machinery suppliers, device suppliers, and materials. Platinum sponsor this year is Nova Centrix, and they've been a fabulous group, lots of machinery on it, including work for their partners, so take some time to take a look at their booth. And the gold sponsors are Agfa, Beatbox Sensors, Linear Technology, and Xenon. And if you look through just this list of uh, the silver, gold, platinum sponsors, you can see there's a diverse range of material companies, uh, electronic manufacturing service companies, component providers, IC makers. <coughs> so this is the floor plan. Uh, just a few things I'd like to highlight on it. Um, we're using all the four walls this year, so make sure you spend time to get all the way to the back. There's plenty to see. This is the second year now we've run the IDTFX Launchpad initiative. The aim of the Launchpad is really to bring very early stage companies into the show and give them an opportunity to put them on the world stage and meet the audience here. So we've asked um, very early stage companies to spin out or um, seeded um, uh, startups to apply. And all of them will be showing um, products or prototypes at this event. Many of them will be showing it publicly for the first time. Everything from um, smart um, uh, bandits all the way through to complete energy independent vehicles. So make sure you take a look at those. We also have demonstration suite as usual. This is our collection of samples that our analysts collect as we go around the world profiling companies. Um, so this is where you can see many of these different technologies um, in one place. And on manufacturing suite, we have many companies running their machinery, so you can ask those experts on hand um, as to how it works. We've also launched an app for this show. Just go to your uh, store and search IPTechX and you'll be able to uh, download it. Hopefully, um, you'll find it a very productive tool. It'll have the agenda on, um, and all the information you about the event to navigate the whole way around. And of course, we'll be on Twitter, so just uh, share your stories with hashtag IPTechX. So before I uh, introduce the, the, the great line of speakers, I'd like to just uh, tell you in one slide a little bit more about ID Tech X. Of course, we are the host of this event, but um, that's part of what we do. Um, and it's one of the ways in which we disseminate the information we learn about these different emerging technologies from around the world. Our main focus is that we provide clarity to our clients on these emerging technologies. And we do that by having a great team of analysts who go around the world, profile companies and their activities, from across the whole supply chain, and in particular, we speak to end users to find out what their problems and needs are. We take all this information, we then help our clients understand how can they get into the market, what is the market size, where's the real opportunity versus the high and so on. So we can help with any of that, and please don't hesitate to approach any member of the Valentine's team on our booth. But indeed, if you just have any questions about anything you hear us today, we'll be delighted to talk it through with you and how can we can help you. So we're here to help and here to make sure you have a really productive and, and a great experience at the show. So without further ado, I'd like to um, just highlight what's coming next. Um, we have four great speakers um, who are going to cover different parts of some of the things I've mentioned. We're going to kick off with Heidi Dosa from Google, who's going to focus on um, all the data that's being collected around new wave wearables and how that's being used to improve um, um, patient experience. Next, we have um, one of the world's largest consumer packaged goods makers, Unilever. Uh, and then we have John Snow, who's a global customer packaging manager. Um, and he'll be talking to us about um, how some of these technologies will be making an impact to consumers using their products. Everything from ice cream to the things you find in the market covered. And then we have from Intel, Dr. Bobic, who's the VP and GM of the Spectrum Computing, talking about their real sense technologies and how it's applicable to everything from 3D printing through to drones and autonomous vehicles. And then we'll hear that great story from with the all about that energy effect vehicle from the facility. So after that, the trade show will open, and just so you're all fully informed, once we come back after the trade show, we'll go into these many different conference sessions. Each will kick off with an IT tech analyst giving you the, uh, the, the industry trends and the key data on those particular topics followed by a keynote for each of those topics, and then we're into the full program. So I truly hope you have a great show. If you have any questions or issues in the show, don't hesitate to go to the registration booth or go to the stand, 
and I'm going to have a great experience, and I hope to meet many of you as well. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce the next speaker, 